Good morning, Discovering Discos. Welcome to another Tuesday Discover More episode, where as the name suggests, we give you even more to discover. From deep dives on hot topics to expert guests and exclusive interviews, we leave nothing left undiscovered. We are your hosts, Natalie and Tara. And if you are watching this on YouTube, you know that we are coming to you from a very, very exciting event. We are here live at the PBR World Team Series in Las Vegas. We are literally in the T-Mobile <laughs> arena recording this. We can smell the dirt. We can. <laughs> I mean, I think we're going to be on a bull soon, actually. Like, I'm <laughs> feeling we're in the center of it. And today we have not just one, but actually two special guests with us. Uh, we have two of the world's greatest bull riders here with us, and they are actually teammates on the Carolina Cowboys. Uh, we have Sage Kim... Kimsey, am I saying that right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And Derek Kolbaba. Is that also? Did I nail that one? Nailed it. I tend to not be great at names, <laughs> so I've, I've been practicing. So hello and welcome to the podcast to both of you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having, for having us. us. Yeah, thanks for carving out time. I know this is obviously a very big weekend for you guys. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm keeping <laughs> thinking to myself, how on earth did we get both of you guys here on like your biggest weekend of the right. year? <laughs> yeah. So I want to. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about feelings heading into this weekend. Obviously, you guys are coming off of a four month, you know, five month stretch here. You guys started in July. We're going now. You guys coming in hot. How are we feeling about this weekend? <laughs> I mean, heck, I, I'm feeling great. I actually, I've been off for about four weeks, missed the last two two events due to a little bit of a growing injury, but uh, feeling refreshed. Kind of got a little vacation there at the end of the year while, they're the, <laughs> while the boys are kind of... <laughs> well, they're at work. You're out, like... Yeah. I was cheering you loud from so the You came back so refreshed. You're ready. You've been uh, on like a spa retreat for a much. month. Pretty <laughs> much. That's what it feels like. But no, I think it's one of those things that all year long, you know, we kind of build it up, especially at our training camp that we'll, we seem to talk about a lot and... Um, it seems like those 12 events flew by for me anyway. And, you know, we kind of get locked in at, at what we're trying to accomplish and, and this is what we love to do. So it seems to fly by and then also take a lifetime as well. But yeah. Sage, what about you coming in second? Was that, did you have season goals oh. of like, where are you? <laughs> right off the bat. Yeah. Coming in second. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I two. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. And Natalie's like, so if you ain't for I no, I think that's a good accomplishment. Yeah, it's a compliment. Oh no, it is. And like it's it's hard to look at number two and be like disappointed with it, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, I mean we started what, like eleven yeah. and oh, twelve and oh, whatever, like I kinda... actually yeah, I have those stats. You guys are more on a twelve yeah. week streak and you had 11 wins and one tie and that's yeah. then that i mean that's hot to start your season like that well for sure and that's what makes the second place finish in the regular season kind of disappointing right but at the end of the day like we got we got our buy for here the first day at t-mobile so you know we we don't have to ride here tonight and um you know moving forward it, it obviously it increases our chances to be successful this weekend so i think everybody's rested ready to go and uh, yeah, just excited. So I want to ask you about that bye week because I actually heard someone from maybe either last season or obviously the season before that said that it was one of the teams that was on a bye week. And they said, in some ways, you got out your first night jitter on Friday, but at the same time, you got rest that first night. Is there any thoughts going into this bye well, week of I like... Mean, you hate to be getting your first round jitters out on Friday and then go home Friday too. I yeah, mean, true. That's, that's, that's true. seen it before. And so... I mean, I guess it's all how you want to look at it. For us, I think we've just got to be locked in mentally to uh, understand that we can't be coming in here laxed and yeah. thinking we're just going to happy step our way through the end of the championship Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone on our team is pretty well locked into the fact that we've got to buy here, but I think everyone's chomping at the bit to to get in the arena and, and uh, showcase what we're all about. Yeah, my jitters are back home. I, I left them at home. <laughs> You don't have time for dinners. You don't have room in your suitcase for those. <laughs> um, but you guys did just come off of a really hot weekend. You guys had one night that was a what, what an unbeaten like a streak, or the whole team had the whole like team a had a perfect, perfect ride, ride yeah. right? Like how how do you guys know off the top of your head? How many like how many times did that happened throughout the season? I think it only happened three times. This yeah, season, okay, right? wow. and we were two. Of them. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah, but you only got second place. So. Right. <laughs> No, but I mean, so I went down actually to the Kansas City um, event when they held it. Mm -hmm. And it is to get five riders on a single team to ride in a row. Like it, it's pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah, it's really hard because you look at the sport of bull riding. It's a lot like baseball. And the fact that like, you know, if you're riding 60 percent of your bulls, like you're one of the top. Gold buckle yeah, by the end of the year. yeah, you're yeah. one of the top top elite guys top five in the world so it's like you have to be very like 
comfortable with failing, well, then if you just do the math, like you have five outs and the very top guys right at 60% of the time, it's like, it, it's tough to get it all to match up and, and get everything to kind of marry up well. So it's difficult. Yeah. So backing up to the very beginning of the season, this question is actually for you, Derek, you actually missed part of last year, all of last mm -hmm. year for an injury. Uh, I say injury. You <laughs> broke your neck. Yeah, so. <laughs> no, it was, I mean, it was one of those things. I mean, bull riding, it's a dangerous sport, right? And we've all dealt with different little things and yeah. broken bones and different surgeries. And um, I broke my neck in Nashville in the 23 season, I think. No, yeah. No. You're like all the injuries are yeah, running no, together. It was, it was 23 <laughs> season anyway. And so that was in August and um, kind of got told it, it wasn't a bad break, I guess, to be, if you can say that about your neck. And then two months later, it had actually shifted. Um, and so I needed to go in for surgery. So that put me out um, about nine months total and got on my first bull in June of this year. And it wasn't about a month before that, I got a call from Carolina Cowboys that they wanted me um, for this, this season. And I hadn't even been on a bull yet. So it was like, Okay, well, heck, if they believe in me, then I know, uh, you know, I'm going to the right spot. But uh, it was there was definitely a time that, you know, you have to really make sure that you're doing this for the right reasons and um, kind of get awoken to what is really at stake at the, in this sport. And uh, there's not really a price tag that you can put on that. You better love it every every moment of it. So. Yeah, I want to double click on that. So a uh, fun fact about my family, my sister broke her neck and I will tell you, she was not getting on a bull like a couple of <laughs> months later. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she like gets herself a little bit nervous when she goes snow skiing. Like, what was it like mentally for you to come back from that? Because I think like that is just got to be, you know, an injury that maybe like is not just a broken arm, right? Like oh, no. it plays a lot more into your mental. Like, am I going to be like stable enough to do this? Like, what was that like for you? Yeah, And like tying into when it first happened, I knew I landed on my head, but I thought I broke my arm. Like my arm lit on fire. I thought something broke, dislocated. And thankfully with, with the great sports med crew and the doctors that we have here, he's like, oh, no, it's actually in your neck and you need to go to the hospital right now. And uh, so, I mean, it, it definitely opens your eyes to what's at stake, right? I mean, we've seen our buddies be told they can't ride anymore. And um, I've seen a buddy walk out the arena and never seen him again. So it's something that you have to be full hearted all in yeah. for the right reasons, not doing it for the money, not doing it for the fame because you absolutely love to do it. And, um, you know, it, it, might, it probably took a month for me to make sure that that was where I still was with the sport and make sure that that fire was still burning like it was when I was 16 years old. And, um, you know, coming back that first one in the practice pin, sure, the nerves were high, but, uh, you know, everything clicked like it like it always does. And I knew that, that I had made the right decision of, you know, this is what I want to continue to do. And, and God gave me the opportunity to do it. And doctors said it was strong. So I took it and ran with it and we're going to keep running with it. Yeah. That has to be such a hard uh, moment to be in, to make that big of a decision. I mean, you grew up around this, right? So it's, oh, yeah. I mean, with many of you guys writing, you know, it's like a lifelong passion for you guys. You have to balance in like a family too. I'm sure they had, yeah, like opinions about it too. And so to be able to just make that decision, you know, am I going to continue or not? Like it just, it feels like such a heavy moment too. So I'm glad it's all worked out. You know, yeah. it's wonderful. It has for you. Now you're here back in second place. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I do enjoy to be mobile, but as long as we're not leaving here second place on Sunday, we'll be happy. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have a good feeling about it. So, um, and not to go, you know, tit for tat on injuries here, but say, do you also, you know, had an injury too? And it, it knocked you out for a little bit, um, a while from the season as well. But you came back, and I want to highlight kind of, I know, uh, you know, the team series is obviously very team-focused, which we're going to dive into, but you had a really big year this year individually. So I just want to talk about what it was like for you ending winning the title and then rolling into the series, too, off that injury and kind of, you know, setting yourself up this way. Yeah, it's been kind of an up-and-down year for me, really. Like, I started out last fall in the UTBs doing really good and this and that, and then had uh, had an old elbow injury that kind of needed cleaned out and um, and taken care of to to allow me to compete. So took a step back, had my elbow operated on and then, um, you know, ended up winning the PBR world finals, which was, which was huge, obviously like financially and career wise, like it was just a big victory. Um, you know, and then, yeah, rolling into the team's deal, just getting everything going and getting it rocking and rolling. Which is so funny because I was reading somewhere that, you know, coming in, this is your second year. And I think it's so funny to think about, you said, you know, coming off that big win into the team series, they referenced you as like a rookie last year, but oh, yeah. you had, you know, like seven wins under your belt and kind of the same thing this year. You know, I know this is newer. It's like 
three, right, three years in, right? Mm-hmm. So um, it's just funny to think about this long history of like individual versus, you know, this this new team oh, aspect. And, and like you want to talk about just the biggest paradigm shift for all of us, because like it and for the people that don't know, right, like the generally speaking, rodeo kids grow up like in rodeo. They grow up on ranches. They grow up be like wanting to be cowboys. Like you're not out playing basketball and playing football like team sports usually isn't really a thing so like most of the guys on the team have never been part of a team at all and like I grew up playing basketball so I had that little bit of element in it but like for the most part most of these guys have never like we've never had a boss we've never had somebody telling us how to do anything um it for the most part, if everybody can believe it, bull riders are very against authority. And kind of, you know, <laughs> Net 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 <laughs> so it's one of those deals. It's been a huge shift for everybody, like psychologically, for sure. And yeah. I think a lot of that, sorry to cut no, you off. Go but ahead. Like, when you talk about a team sport in bull riding, right? Like sometimes games are, are won by one ride. 86 points beats 85 points. So four other guys did not get the job done, but the team still won. And so finding that right headspace to be like, okay, I can't fall into this little trap of I, I fell off, we sucked, and yeah. then let it roll into tomorrow. You have to be able to take the confidence from maybe your teammate that did really well that night and try to ride off of that confidence into the next day. And, and it's just tough. Right? You got you to gotta be able to shake it off even though the team's doing well or it might be vice versa. But um, it, it definitely has thrown in a little bit of different – yeah, you know I mean, it's been so much fun though getting to learn all of your teammates, right? Well, because yeah. like everybody's got their own stuff. And I feel like there's like two different reactions. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, it, it's like it's so much fun though because like some guys are very much like you know keep to themselves and this and that, and like some guys don't like to talk about the good or the bad, and like it's just fun. Like I don't know, it's oh, yeah. fun to me anyway. Like the locker room atmosphere is just different because you have to care about all these guys' feelings now, mm-hmm. which has just never been a thing in our world. It's like, hey, suck it up, go get on try hard Mm -hmm. and it's like it's different now yeah I want to like stay in here a minute because you know this has been an individual sport for 30 years so there's a lot of tradition there's a lot of legacy a lot of history and you guys literally shook everything up three years ago in 2022 with these teams with the draft with all of it uh I feel like most people are very excited I think there's a few like there are some people that are you know unsure of it still and still have a lot of questions where are you guys kind of at on this like this move to this team like do you feel like it gives you some security you like the team camaraderie is it like a combination of both or like where are you guys lying on it yeah I love every part of it like 100 percent it's and, and like the the big upside for me is the young kids that are coming out. So uh, again, for the viewers that the listeners that aren't really familiar with it, um, like bull riding is very much like you're you're an independent contractor and you just go make it or you don't, right? So you know, growing up, you kind of hone your skills at some some smaller youth and amateur stuff, and then like as you as you turn eighteen, you're able to buy your professional card, and then like. Literally, it's either you're 18 years old and you make it or you don't, right? There is no guidance. There is no leadership. There is no coaching. There is no nothing. Like, it is all on you, whether you succeed or whether you do not succeed. And now you're you're coming in and not only, like, the guaranteed money is really good and the money's increased a lot throughout the team series, but take Carolina, for instance. Like, you come and immediately, say you get drafted right out of high school, like Ethan Winkler. I was about to say, you guys have an 18-year-old on your team. He's our 18-year-old Yes, that's crazy. (laughs) As Tiffany says, he's 18 going on 16. Yeah, exactly. But so you bring these 18-year-old kids in now, and, like, not only do they have – peers and you know mm-hmm. guys like me and Derek that have been doing this over a decade kind of been there done that you have a head coach in Jerome Davis you have an assistant coach Robson Palermo like these guys houses are just open to the you have mama Tiffany oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you, have you, you have everything kind of set up for you to be successful now and like it's it's infrastructure that the sports never had and that's the part that I love even like general manager you and I were talking about that like someone that's like helping manage your career like how do you turn yourself into a personality a talent like I mean beyond like where is right. this what's the I don't know I just think that's such an interesting like component to this to change it from just you are out there on your own I mean hopefully you had you know some kind of mentor dad uncle somebody that was in it but now you have this entire support team around you and just like that what you said a lot of us did have either a dad or grandpa or uncle that that knew understood it enough to where give you a a helping hand but there's some guys that they seen it on tv mom and dad tried to figure out the best way to get you into it and yeah. they, they just had woke a lot up of one natural day and, ability yeah. and they were able to make it but it, there's some decisions that have to be made once you do get to that level and and a lot of that 
kind of is the deciding factor on where where that career goes but um backpedaling back to what you what i enjoy about the team series is just how much it, it raises that that level of of competition i think um like the mentality that we all have walking out of our locker room is something that i can't remember very many times in the individual season walking out with that much just authority and and the presence that that the team has and i think it brings out the best in each and every one of the guys yeah i mean i know i can speak as a fan i i really love the switch in this team series um and like the 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 team aspect of it it's so fun to watch i mean i have grown up around rodeos and you know watched them for for a long time and yeah it's like you know rodeos are fun you go to the events everyone loves bull riding you know put it at the end for a reason like it's a great it's a great sport to watch it's always fun to watch but when i went to that first team series you have like you're cheering for a team you know the one guy comes out he does it you're like yes the next one okay we're on a roll oh no someone fell okay like it's like like a momentum yeah I mean it's like a whole whole thing like it is so like personally speaking for myself it is so fun to watch it's like such a different take on the individual riding aspect of it it never has given fans like that feeling everyone always wanted everyone to do well okay I've got my favorite guy but I don't yeah anyone doesn't do well and now it's like well I've got my team they're going against the Austin Gamblers I hope they buck up not that they get hurt but Hope they don't do as well as my team. Yeah. And so you kind of get like that, that little hometown bit of a, pride yeah, a little absolutely. bit. Absolutely. And it sure. just gives you a little more something to cheer for. But yeah. uh, so I want to ask you guys about the draft because that is also on this note of like different things for you guys as a writer. I mean, you know, like let's say football. If you grow up with aspirations of joining football, you know, like that's going to be part of the process, right? This this draft, like, you know, it it's you understand that. This is completely new. Like, what was it like to be part of a draft? Like, how did that go? Like yeah, the details I, for me. He he uh, waited until the second draft. <laughs> yeah, us, you were you were in round one. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, no, it was it was just different, right? Like you said, you've watched it on for the NFL or the MLB, and um, kind of you know having little conversations beforehand and seeing where you might go, and then um, maybe that plan just blows up in your face and you go somewhere completely different. But it's fun, like I said, it's it's something that's. Cowboys don't really like change that much. And so at the time you're probably like, Oh boy, what are we getting ourselves <laughs> into? And and now, you know, especially over the last three years, I think everything's just continuing to get better and and uh and we see it now. So it's it was definitely a great decision. But yeah. It was fun for me. Like, I'm a huge <laughs> sports fan, and it was one of those deals. Like I, I loved the thought of the draft. I loved everything, and then so in the inaugural team season, I actually got hurt. Well, they hired me on to be the commentator, so I was the oh, color cool. analyst. Um, so I got to see like it was front row seat for me. I got to see the good, bad, the ugly of PBR <laughs> teams, and like you know saw which teams were great and saw which teams maybe weren't so great to ride for and like saw the dynamics in the locker room because like I, it was I was obviously commentating on all of my buddies but like I'd go hang out in the locker rooms and just kind of see the vibes and see like how much how different each locker room was and all of that it was fun a little uh, action here a little, uh, <laughs> yeah, what is it called uh, intermission yeah <laughs> Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, not really a whole yeah. lot. Yeah. Most of them. Some you of them we get to. see it through the panel. Yeah. That's about it. But it's pretty cool. Like, it has to get you guys pumped up. Like So cool, yeah. yeah. I think that's the one thing that has always set the PBR, as, as, you know, above all yeah. the rest and kind of, um, you know, they're, they're leading the charge on... This isn't just a bull riding, you know. This is going to be a full experience for the whole family, and and yeah, they've they've done it upright. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, I remember thinking in in Kansas, like I think the players are going to catch on fire. I mean, there was flames <laughs> going everywhere. It's a whole production. <laughs> you didn't realize your job was going to get even more dangerous. Yeah, 100%. yeah. I'm going to start packing some uh, earplugs through the intros before too long. That pyro is loud. You are one of the older ones on the team <laughs> talking about earplugs. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Number, number two. What'd you say? One more time. <laughs> the old guys. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be the title of the podcast. That's um, keeping us humble. Sure. <laughs> no, on that note, actually, I want to I want to talk about kind of shift a little bit. Obviously, we're still in the realm of bull riding, but I want to talk about that. Like the adrenaline. I mean, we were just talking kind of about the adrenaline, the excitement of the, the pre-show. Somehow, can you make it make sense to all of our listeners getting on a bull and, and, and riding? Like, what's that like? I don't know if you can put it into words, but. I take um, my family, we go to the CNFR all the time. It's one of my favorite rodeos. I love watching college um, ride. And we, I have had the opportunity to go back behind the shoots before and kind of be a part of, you know, that, that um, environment, which is obviously very, very different than being in the stands. And I tell you, the bull riders, you guys, you guys are always the one that are in the corner, you're bandaged up. And then seeing you guys, what it takes to get on the bull. I mean, this, this animal is just rattling in this tiny little cage. You guys are on there. People are talking. It's noise. You're... Your head's nodding like, you think I got this? I mean, I just, it was a whole different experience watching it that closely. Can you kind of put into words, like, what it's like to get on a bull, how it feels? He's always really better with words. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, it, it sounds like cliche and weird, but like, it really is just our job Yeah. at the end of the day. And it's, luckily, we're put in a position and like Derek said, like, we're blessed enough to have the opportunity to come do something that we love and like. I think it starts it. at a really young age too, though. Right? I was like, gonna say, you're, like you're yeah, not yeah, when you're just getting high thrown and on. you're seeing it, and you're like, oh my gosh, that is just like that is it right there. Is yeah. whatever he's doing and seeing how hard that bull bucks, and then how athletic the bull is, and and the crowd goes crazy, and then from a young age you just you become a fan, right? Before you even become yeah. an athlete or a professional bull rider, you were a fan of it, and we probably burn the the VHS tape off eight seconds and. <laughs> And you just you back you to love. the dating him, right? Yeah. 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 Well, we know what you're They're talking about, so for our listeners that don't know what that is, we oh, can't help you. I also say you don't like you don't get thrown on the biggest, baddest bull. Like there's a progression, right? Like you're not like a frog thrown in boiling water. To some degree, you grew up with it. You see it. You like start on something. Like a lot of times, you know, you start on like a smaller like steer or what? Do you like it's like you build up. Right, I don't sheep know. Riding, sheep riding, sheep riding, <laughs> button busting. Yeah. I think I'm curious if it loses um do you lose the adrenaline after doing it for as long as you guys have done or is it every single ride you feel that what we imagine you know those nerves like that adrenaline rushing through you is that happen or does it dull a little bit i think everyone probably has a little different answer to yeah. that but i mean there are times when you you know you have to find it right we've yeah. seen or at least I, you know, I think this will be my eighth year riding in t-mobile and so yeah you do have to find that spot in your brain to not allow yourself to kind of go into cruise control or, or be numb to the things that that is so are funny exciting. i don't um, know if i could go numb on the back of a bull like <laughs> zone out a fine line of like being concentrated like not letting your nerves get away from you not being numb to it either there's got to be like i would say a fine line there that you're like you are pumped up you're yeah. excited but you're in control of that like well and each guy's so different too because yeah. like That's even true. just even just in our team like a guy like Dalen Swearingen, like he's got the biggest motor of any guy I've ever been around. Like he doesn't sit still. He's going yeah. all the time. Like he's revved up to a hundred, literally 24 hours a day. Yeah. And then like a guy like Derek and I, like we're both like way more reserved, like been doing this a long time. And like, for me, like I always have to like rev myself up and it, it's just different because like Dalen's definitely the guy that like he's always toning it back and like waiting till the right time to kind of get in peak performance. And then like I know as for myself for sure, like I always have to ramp it up. So and I think with with age, you uh, <laughs> you guys keep you know, doing this to yourself. Yeah, <laughs> with, with experience, experience. Yeah. There you go. I think you know at least for me, it's it's become a lot um, clearer on where I need to be and where I feel I ride the best and and how to get to that spot mentally. Um, 
because at the end of the day, that is bull riding. If if it's not right right here, especially at this level, I mean, everyone physically is capable of of riding probably the best bulls here. Um, but but mentally is what separates that that top ten, top five to the rest of the field. Yeah. Uh, we have talked a lot about the athletes, you guys, but there's another athlete in this arena that you guys have mentioned, but we have not exclusively talked about, and that is the bulls themselves. I heard a quote that it is like a one ton cat leaping into the air. And I was like, I never would have put that together, (laughs) but that is actually the best analogy I've ever heard because, oh my gosh, it is a one ton beast, one ton, what plus beast that literally leaps into the, I mean, it's insane. Some of these bulls. It's well, crazy, yeah. I think what's interesting, I mean, you guys are aware of this cause you, I mean, this is, you know, you live it, breathe it, but the more and more I think people get into this and kind of learn about it, the bulls, they have, they have different ways of riding. They respond to you differently. And, you know, we actually had Haley Kinsel on the podcast and we were talking to her about her connection with sister that's an animal she gets to go on and develop a relationship with over and over and over again so that you can go out and perform together. And I was just sitting here now thinking about how you guys have to mentally prepare for a beast underneath you that, I mean, I don't know how many times you re-ride a bull. You know, I mean, it's Not like you're often, re- yeah. re-preparing individually new each time. And that's like a whole nother aspect to it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we don't really have like, like that intimate connection that I imagine Haley and sister, like really, like you said that like it's been formed over years. Right. And, um, yeah, so so we don't really have that aspect of it, but it's... the respect I would say is, is clearly there. Oh, for <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. But with the, it's, yeah, it's just, it's very crazy to think that just the different characters in those bulls, there's some bulls, world champion bucking bulls that they'll wash like a dog in the back yeah. pins. I mean, they're nice. They stand like a shot dog. It's just, they stand perfect and their ears might twitch a little bit. And the moment that gate latch cracks, they are explosive. And then the others, I think they hate their tail. They hate everything. <laughs> and they hate everything. It's, it's, it's <laughs> the way it is, but yeah, no, it is. It's, and it's always cool. Cause like we have a bunch of film and everything else. Right. So like film study is a big part of our preparation. And I like was, that, I want to ask bull, you about that. The, yeah. The way the bulls are built, the way they buck, their style, this and that. Like, Which way they turn and oh, different yeah. things. Well, and like the direction can change. Like when I'm doing my film study, uh, like most of it is just like seeing like kind of how a bull bucks, right? Because it's no different than like how a person walks or run. Like they always kind of carry that same style from out to out. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's definitely, it's different. I don't, when, I don't know how to explain it really. With the team, when do you know which bull you'll be riding? And like, how does that work different from individual with the team of like, who's riding what bull? Like, can you give us a little bit on that? Um, well, which that first, first bull we would normally know three days in advance. Yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. So do you guys know who you're riding, uh, tomorrow? Not yet. No. Since okay. It's the second day of competition out here. Oh yeah. That, so yep. The, the way it works is like the, the first day of competition, um, our, our head coach, Jerome Davis, will we'll get the list of bulls. He'll kind of go through it all. Um, you know, him, him and Robinson Palermo, both our assistant coach, they'll kind of go through it all, kind of like double check, look at everything, pull up a bunch of videos, see which guys stylistically match up with what bulls, um, and, and kind of get like a game plan going down. Usually um, Jerome will call us all like that afternoon, that night, and just be like, hey, what do you think of this bull? Um, which I'm pretty sure all of us say the same thing. We're like, yeah, Jerome. <laughs> sure, whatever. <laughs> Think? Like, have you ever said no it. like not uh, that one <laughs> not really no it's a, it, Jerome knows like I've got like one bull that's just a hard no for me and and he knows that bull, so okay um so yeah he'd never put me on him but other than that now like it's that that's the biggest difference so because generally speaking it's always been random draw until our championship rounds and then you get to pick the bull that you want um and, and in the team's deal it's all it's all set up by your organization and it's a lot of teams have a different different approach to it um generally speaking though the head coach sets the matchup sets uh like what order we go in the lineup because momentum is a big thing in all of these games that all the teams are kind of finding out so uh Jerome Jerome handles all of that Mm -hmm. yeah I want to actually double click on Jerome because uh, I heard a quote from JB Mooney that said it was his idol growing up you have been with him now what two years is that correct and this is your first year with him what is it like, you know, like I, I read something else that it was like, a, you know, a young golfer idolizing like Tiger Woods, right? Like he is royalty in this sport, one of the founders. What is it like riding for him? Getting like you talked about, you don't have a coach, you know, you don't have a mentor until now yeah. getting one and one advice from him. Oh, it, it's so cool. <laughs> He's yeah, like, I'm it's, speechless. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and not even so much about like the bull riding part of things, just like as people. 
Jerome and Tiffany are two of like the best people I've ever met. So like just getting to be around them is Absolutely. it makes you be a better person for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Better person. And it's just nice. I I enjoy just talking shop with with someone like that who yeah. has, has seen it all, been through it all, and and just always kind of pick his brain on his outlook on, you know, how he went about this or how he would go about that. And uh it's, you know, always trying to learn. And and I think that's the best part about the Carolina Cowboys is I don't think there's one person in that locker room um, that isn't ready to learn something new that day and, and just continue to get better. And, and when you surround yourself with people like Jerome Davis, you know, up is, is what's in the future. And uh, it's, it's just been a lot of fun for me. Yeah. Well, that's a nice heartfelt fuzzy place to kind of wrap this up before we, we have a little trivia. We'll end on the, we'll we'll end on the, the fast notes. Um, (laughs) <laughs> we're almost done, and then we'll stop poking fun at you. Um, okay, if you had to pick, uh, you guys don't get to pick like the song you ride to, right? That's like controlled by. I think you uh, do. No, you can't. Oh, okay. So what? Um, what is your guys's like? If you had a go-to song to pick to bull riding, which one would you pick? I don't have one, and everybody's been giving me a hard time because they're like, <laughs> "We what hit do a sore mean? subject." Apparently, you don't have a song. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I just yeah. never really have picked one. Yeah, mine, uh, mine. Would you hold on? Would you go for like? Would it be like a genre? Would it be like? Rap, country, uh, rap, country rock. like yeah. My Sage my music song is. It's it's so ideal. And, no, so <laughs> he'd pick a podcast. To walk out <laughs> Our podcast, Discover <laughs> Act. And put that in the next. Yeah, yeah, if you want to put that in the next arena, <laughs> that'd be great. Will be out live on Tuesday, <laughs> so you know. Yeah. Uh, no, so honestly, like I, I do have a really weird music taste. Uh, Right, right now, I'm like my favorite song is "You Say" by Lauren Daigle, and like I would, that would be my ride. I don't, song. I don't think I do. Either. Literally, me going home and like googling <laughs> it. Yeah. I don't know. It's great. Yeah, she's a Christian artist. It's like I don't know. I love that song. Perfect. Song. Perfect. The guys do not appreciate. It. <laughs> not their pump up music. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, now when the spotlight's on you. What's oh, yours? Yeah, no, mine is uh, "Long Cool Woman." Oh, that's, that's a good okay. one. Yep, yeah, that's a good one. Okay, well, we already know your answer, Sage. If you weren't going to be a bull rider, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no. If you had to pick another event within rodeoing, what would you do if you weren't going to bull ride? Event. Hmm. I don't know. I rode saddle bronc horses in high school. I was okay at that, like at the high school level. Um, but probably team roping because it seems to be like the least demanding. I'd yeah. Say. <laughs> we're gonna put <laughs> someone is gonna come at us we're gonna make that a, a reel and we're gonna blast that into the <laughs> that's gonna go viral for sure all right <laughs> y'all are welcome <laughs> uh, i don't know what mine would be i've i've always respected the bareback rider just because i mean you can see it and you've seen it i mean they go to a place when they're gonna <laughs> I You're think, about to crack your hand back. Right? Not right now. <laughs> yeah. But maybe no. when I was 16 and was able to get brought up by like a Casey Field and. No way, dude. I don't There's know. He makes no it look pretty. Fun. <laughs> he does. Yeah. I, you don't. <laughs> That's what it's safe just kicking out. Yeah. Muscle. Pure muscle. And then really flip Your that neck switch. would have to be like twice the size. Yeah, that's true. a pretty rough <laughs> that, That's a pre broken neck. Yeah. No thought. way. Your hair would get even fluffier. There'd be even longer. more volume. Call Tilden. Like see what he does. Yeah. Rocker. Yep. Maybe I'll. Cat, maybe I'll just do team roping. Yeah. Oh, there we go. You two can do it together. (laughs) All right, our last one. Um, I I don't know why, but I just love bulls names. I think it's so fun to name them. Do you guys have like a name that stands out, a favorite name? If you could name a bull, like have you ever thought about it? Oh my. Or do you have a favorite bull you rode? It well, legends, like I think that's just like an iconic name. I can't think of any that I would name one, but I, I always, my favorite bull is Bruiser. That okay. was m- one of my favorite bulls that I ever got to ride. And um, I know Sage has yeah. been there and seen the high scores too. But yeah, I, his personality for me is what, what took the cake. Oh, favorite bull for sure. Yeah. And, and as he was talking about world champion bulls getting bubble baths, like Bruiser <laughs> would Bruiser. literally be getting a bubble bath <laughs> before so he goes and competes. <laughs> like just the coolest animal ever. Oh, I love that. All right. Well, we're kind of wrapping up here. I am so thankful you guys took an hour out of, like we said at the very beginning, one of the biggest weekends, you know, this year for you guys to talk with us. 
Uh, but I want to ask you kind of one final question. How are you guys going into tomorrow night? What are you guys thinking? What are you guys kind of doing to prepare? Like, just where are you guys at? I mean, you guys seem so calm and cool and collected. And I feel like if I was going into the Super Bowl of PBR, I would be, like, probably losing my shit. But you guys are just, like, smooth sailing. How are you guys feeling? What are you guys looking for? You know, what are you looking in the lineup with the Bulls? Like, give it to us all. Uh, I'd say, I mean, it feels like, try to make it feel like any other weekend. Like, I mean, it's actually it's, just a regular Monday at work. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, something like that. That's a good way to go about it. I don't know, man. I I just have, like, really high expectations this week for us. And, I, I mean, cause it, so this is the first time as a team we've been, like, full strength healthy since our 12-0 and undefeated streak. Like, because we had injury in the middle of the year, losing Adriano Salgado. And then, like, as he's coming back, Derek goes down. So, like, really the team that's coming here still hasn't been beat this year. And it's, I don't know, I'm – Personally, like, I'm super excited. Like, the energy of all the guys is just through the roof. Everybody's super healthy. Like, we're just kind of chomping at the bit, ready to go. Yeah, it couldn't have come at a better time, too, like, for everyone to be healthy and, like yeah. you said, chomping at the yeah, bit to come together. Moment. Yeah, so. Well, we will be cheering you on, certainly. Um, you guys, this will air, obviously, afterwards, so we'll know how you guys did when <laughs> this airs. But uh, we have our fingers crossed for the Carolina Cowboys, especially for you two out there riding. And um, just thank you again so much. And for everyone tuning in, we will see you guys on Thursday. Appreciate y'all.